Good morning. Welcome, welcome to our worship service this morning. It's the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today, we're, our lesson will be from the Old Testament. And uh, as God has uh, promised that he will never depart from us. Uh, so now let us uh, please rise. We'll begin our, with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. join in a prayer of confession. Holy Lord, as we stand in your presence, we are aware of our sins of thought, word, and action. We have not always lived our lives according to your will. We have often failed to live up to your expectations. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But we know your promise that we confess our sins you will come to your cry and grant us forgiveness. O oh Lord, hear us now as we confess our sins to you. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by Savior, simple and unclean. We are not against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us, lead us, and lead us, and lead us. So that we may not and your ways in your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
You may be seated for the song of praise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Lord. Jesus, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give Give thanks thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him alone his great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. To the sun to rule over the day, for the steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as in the the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, Strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you rescue us from all adversaries. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this morning, and this is we're the basis for my message, God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I will establish my covenant with you and for your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is as it is for every beast of the earth, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall I all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall a flood Shall there be a flood to destroy the earth? And God said, This is the sign that the, of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints that it is the breadth and width and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we have asked or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Immediately. Jesus made his disciples get out, into, get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they all they saw, excuse me, for they all saw him and were testified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they uttered astoundingly, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts had been hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genericet and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people in all their beds to wherever they heard that he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch him, even the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched it were made well. 
This is the word of the Lord. We join together in saying the words of the Apostle Truth Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker in heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the song of the day. different today. We have one child. This is my children's sermon, and we're just going to go right into it. So I'm coming to you. You can sit. I'm sure you're very aware of the story of creation when God created man. Have you ever been like someplace where it's like cloudy and it's like a mist? Just misty, not raining? No? Like, like Oh, really? I can't see it. I don't know why. Where it's, just, where it's just foggy? You see fog? You know, the Bible tells us that when God created the world, at first, there was no rain. He said no rain had fallen. The mist watered the ground. And then just before he created man, the Bible says no rain had fallen. The, the whole Garden of Eden was watered by a river. So the mist and the river and the water that were already in the ground, that's what watered the Garden of Eden. 
Think about that. And then a little later, there was the flood. Remember the story of Noah? When the rain came down, that was the first time that rain actually falling was mentioned in the Bible. Genesis is full of firsts, and that was the first time that rain was mentioned. And then after the flood, when Noah came out, it was almost a year later, that was the first time that a bow, the first time that our clouds were mentioned in the Bible, and then the first time that God had stated our covenant. Do you know what a covenant is? Listen, we'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? The overwhelming power of God was fully at hand as Noah and his family, along with the animals, were sealed up in the ark. Probably a very dark place. An overwhelming display of God's power and of his wrath. The consequences of wickedness and sinful indulgence had brought the world to this moment. Death and destruction were suddenly abounding. And all Noah and the inhabitants of the ark could do was ride it out. Inside the ark was safety and security. Outside the ark was death and destruction. Inside the ark was life and provision. Outside the ark was darkness and eventually silence. And then the waiting began. Waiting. Waiting, waiting for the flood waters to subside, waiting for the dry land to appear. Oh, Lord, how long? Noah and the inhabitants of the ark spent about a year, roughly 370 days inside, and then it was time to get out. With the command of God and the opening of the door, out came Noah. His family and every animal that had been cooped up inside. Try to imagine, if you can, the eerie silence. Yeah, there were the sounds of all the animals tromp, tromp, tromping back onto the land. But what else? All else was silent. Because the world around Noah and his family, the total absence of life that existed prior to the destruction of the flood. And what did Noah do first? The Bible tells us he built an ark to the Lord, an altar to the Lord, excuse me, and made sacrifices on that altar of burnt offerings. Then the Bible tells us what God said to Noah. Behold, I will establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you. Our text is a story of God initiates a covenant and gives us signs, signs that always remind us of his eternal hope and provision. So let's go back a minute to the beginning. You know the story. Say it with me. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. And then in Genesis, the second verse of, of chapter 1, in the second half, it says the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Water. Consider water. Most of the human body is water, 60%. The brain and the kidneys are 80 to 85%. The heart and lungs, 70 to 80%. Whole blood is 50% water. Even your teeth, 5 to 10% water. That life-sustaining substance so necessary for physical life. And again, that's physical life. We find it connected to the Word of God in our holy baptism, ushering in spiritual life. Water, the source of rain. Rain, the source of clouds. Clouds, the makeup of rainbows. We'll get back to that. Genesis tells us that before the creation of man, on the sixth day, as I said to David, the Lord had not caused it to rain on the land. A mist 
It was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground, Genesis 2, verse 5. And then on the sixth day, when God created man and put him in the garden that he, God, had created, the garden that he planted, we read in verse 10, a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and all was well. Scripture tells us it was good. Man created an image of God and meant to dwell in harmony with God and with all his good creation. Good. Now, we have made to think of the term good in relative terms today. You've likely filled out an evaluation, say, of a service or a product, and they've asked you to rate it from good, better, or best, seemingly putting good at the lower level. After all, we've devised terms like excellent, awesome, rad, bodacious, but suffice it to say that in the beginning and now, it must have been way beyond any adjective you could ever come up with. So simply understand God's definition of good. Nothing could ever have been greater. Then everything became not well, not good. Man sins, and Adam and Eve disobey God. The first two murderers are named in Genesis chapter 4. Cain murders Abel. Lamech, not the Lamech, the, who is the father of Noah, murders an unnamed man. And it continues to get worse for 10 generations, and those were longer generations that we understand today. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every indication, that's every, of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of God. So no longer was good to the utmost extreme, but bad to the opposite, utmost extreme. So bad that the Lord God said, I will blot out man. So Noah's instructed to build an ark, and God says, what is to come? For seven days I will send rain on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and every living thing that I have made I blot out from the face of the ground. You may recall a while back there was a comedian who did a little skit, and uh, God told Noah to say, told Noah, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And the comedian says, saying, Noah says, what's an ark? Sure, what's an ark? I'm wondering if Noah said, okay, what's rain? Noah's instructed to build an ark, and God says what is to come. I will send rain 40 days and 40 nights. Created in seven days, and here approximately ten generations later, with the exception of the ark and its passengers, it will all be gone in 40 days, destroyed by that same life-sustaining water that once covered the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, all that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens opened, and rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Of 105 times that the word rain is used in the Bible, this is the first time the Scripture tells of falling rain. Fast forward, a year passes. Noah and his family finally emerged from the ark. So, Returning to the events recorded in today's Old Testament lesson read earlier, I'm going to read it again. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. 
I have set my bow in the cloud, and I have sh it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. Yeah, we see a lot of firsts in Genesis. Obviously, it's the first. I already mentioned the flood account is the first record of falling rain, and here's the first time that clouds and bow, as in rainbow, and covenant appear in the Bible. God makes a covenant. It's time for a new start. God is ready to make a covenant with Noah and his family and all living creatures that came out of the ark. So what exactly is a covenant? This new thing. Simply put, it's an agreement between two parties, in this case, between God and his creation. We're most familiar with covenants that go something like this. You do this, and I'll do that. If you remain faithful, I will bless you. A quid pro quo arrangement. However, this covenant that God is about to make with Noah and the creation is very difficult, different, different from that quid pro quo arrangement. Genesis chapter 9, out of the death and destruction of the flood, God was about to bring hope and peace, but we saw way back in the garden with man's disobedience, because of mankind's original sin, mankind, including us, on our own, apart from God, we're incapable of remaining faithful. This was going to be a unilateral covenant. That is, God would be the one to establish the covenant, and he will obligate himself to the terms of the covenant. God would require nothing from the people, and his promise to them was unconditional. So what are the terms to which God is binding himself in this covenant? God says, never again. When God makes a covenant with his creation, we need to sit up and take notice. But even more so when God says, never again. Never again would God bring waters from above and beneath that destroy all life on earth. Rain still falls, floods still rage, they foam, life still in peril due to these regional outbreaks. But never again will all life perish due to God calling upon the waters to blot out all of life. Today, people struggle with fear and anxiety over the chaos and turmoil that abounds in the world, hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes, rivers flooding, wars. Some cry out, where is God? In a personal way, we struggle as we find ourselves maybe far off from God to do our disobedience to his perfect law. Do we doubt? Do we doubt his presence in our daily lives? Do we doubt his love? Even do we doubt his existence? Do we fear his wrath and righteousness? We seek mercy. But do we live in fear that mercy may not be found? We can take comfort in the words of the Apostle Paul, who writes into the early church in Rome, chapters 8. You know them. He lists a whole thing, lists, and he says nothing. will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. God provides hope. That nothing it's like never again, the never again he said to Noah. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ. God provides hope. It's provided in the sign of his bow. We saw that. We can see a rainbow in a droplet of water, or more spectacularly, in the moments after a storm subsides, a rainbow is simply the white light of the sun 
reflected from the back of a, well, millions of drops of water, shining into millions of water droplets and reflecting back a spectrum of colors. We can appreciate the perfect natural laws that God has set in place for that spectrum of colors to appear. In a primary bow of 42 degrees, approximately 42 degrees width, and if we're really lucky, we see that secondary bow above it, where the water comes in and bounces twice in that water droplet and creates another bow, 45 degrees in width. How many times have you stood and said, look at the rainbow? When you see that, do you remember God's covenant? The sight of a rainbow can take our breath away. Seven visible colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and there are more colors than can meet the eye. It's a continuum of over one million colors blended together, and they transcend what the human eye can see. It's a full measure of God's creative power on display for us and a sign to remind of his, of his mercy and love. This elaborate, beautiful, breathtaking sign is a vehicle God chooses to remind us of his covenant, a covenant born out of destruction and reminding us of hope. Martin Luther says, this sign should remind us to give thanks to God for as often as the rainbow appears, it preaches to the entire world with a loud voice about the wrath which once moved God to destroy the whole world. It also gives comfort that we may have the conviction that God is kindly inclined toward us again and will never again make use of so horrible a punishment. The rainbow bespeaks, never again shall the earth be flooded with all life it's wiped away. But this is not the only sign God provides in order to bring comfort and peace to us. It's true that we no longer need, need, no longer need to fear the devastating flood waters that can consume all life, but we know that we have fallen short of God's law and all it demands. Sin is a terminal disease, separates us from God. We come, become prisoners of an ark of our own building. It keeps us from the light and glory of his promise in the rainbow. Trapped in our own sinful darkness, there's only one cure for our sin, the precious blood of our God's own Son, Jesus Christ. That symbol that God chose to bring peace and life and hope to the world was the cross of Calvary. There upon that cross, Jesus would pour out his lifeblood for the sins of the whole world. And just as Noah and his family and the animals were hidden in the ark to preserve humankind, so you and I are now, as stated in Colossians 3, verse 3, hidden with Christ. Just as the cross of Christ stands as a sign of your salvation, so you have received this amazing gift through the washing floodwaters of baptism. 1 Peter 3, verse 20 to 23. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities and powers having been subjected to him. Out of destruction that your sin has brought to your life, God provides an everlasting hope that he alone could provide your adoption as his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. And as the rainbow reminds you that God will never destroy the world again by a flood, the cross of Christ reminds us that our sins have been paid in full. Luther teaches us in the morning prayer, when you get up in the morning, 
make the sign of the Holy Cross. So, as we daily rise and walk in his light, may we make the sign of the cross as a means to remember that we are baptized into his, this faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In other words, remember your baptism. Remember the cross. Remember the source of your hope and salvation. Again, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please rise for prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have made us your own dear children through holy baptism. Strengthen us with power by your Holy Spirit in our inner being that your Son may dwell in our hearts through faith and that we would be rooted and grounded in love. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, as you preserved Noah and his family and brought forth new life from the ark under the promise of your covenant, bless us now, our families also. Make marriages strong and faithful according to your will. Let your word rule in every home, uniting its members in forgiveness and causing your son to dwell in every heart through faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of might, spare us and future generations from wickedness. Give blessing to our nation and its rules, rulers in accordance to rule according to your good pleasure. Protect the members of our armed forces, police, and other public servants. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we, your people, cry out for your healing hand upon David, Michael, Dan, Paul, Marilyn, Carolyn, Bud, Henry, Richard, Barbara, John, Bill, Annetta, Carol, Laureen, Beth, Jimmy, and all those in need, even as you sent your son to heal and make whole, teach them ever to trust in your love, for you never leave nor forsake them. We also remember the family and friends of Earl, who went to his eternal rest with you this week. Be with them as they mourn his passing, but also rejoice in the glorious resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your name, you name every family in heaven and on earth. We give thanks for our brothers and sisters in Christ who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. Preserve us in the faith so that Christ might dwell in our hearts richly until that day when we join them around your throne. For the sake of your Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and lead us into to trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And it is the kingdom and the power and the glory for men and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless us and keep us the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us his peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing song.
Of what you've done. 